Okay, well, for all you subscribers who have hung in there and watched all those videos on, you know, making your own rigs and sinkers and uh, sand spikes, well, I think what we need now is just a summary on how to catch pompano. And when I say how to catch pompano, I mean, well, you know, well, what beaches should I go to? And, uh, you know, what bait am I supposed to be using? We didn't really uh, give you any type of a summary of uh, the things you need to do once you get all your gear made. So let's let's get that done. It's not real complicated. And, and, you know, you can ask a lot of different surf fishermen what their priorities are. And these are just mine. So you take it for what it's worth. But uh, I've been hanging out with people that catch a lot of pompano. Uh, my dad, uh, my brother-in-law and my nephew for uh, all the years I've been surf fishing and these top five work for me and for uh, for you too if you want to try them out but uh, let's take number one you know effort uh, if you're a snowbird and you're only going to Florida for a week or two it's hard to you know do the research that you want you can still do it but you just got to take copious notes and Every year you go back, you'll be smarter. But if you're a local, it's a lot easier to accomplish, number one. You know, do your beach research. Go to all your beaches in your area that's feasible for you to fish in without, uh, you know, using too much gasoline, etc. But go to those beaches and, and, and check them out and find out uh, when you can get in. Uh, that's important, too. Uh, you know, you want to... You want to also make contacts on those beaches when you're fishing. You know, you might have a network of buddies with cell phones and uh, just a phone call away telling you that a mile down the beach they're catching pumps. So that's important to make contacts. Uh, you know, consider a commercial license. You don't have to uh, be able to sell Pompano right away. If you have access to the fish house, you're going to have access to... Uh, inexpensive hooks, probably free ice, maybe not, depends on your fish house, and you're going to meet people there that are, you know, that are beach fishermen. You're going to find a lot of them are boat fishermen, but it's worth, you know, for the 30 bucks, it's definitely worth getting that commercial license. And when you're doing your beach research, you know, pay attention to what's going on in that beach. You know, are there a lot of birds feeding? Is there a lot of feed in the water? Uh, is the sand real soft? When you're walking in the sand down near the uh, water, are you sinking into your ankles a little bit? Or are you walking on uh, sand that's like concrete? Well, the sand that's like concrete isn't good for you because you want the, the uh, sand that's more coarse, has more water around it. And the reason for that is, is that our, uh, our friend, the, Mr. Sandflea, likes to live there. So, you know, you're going to have better chance of catching fish there. You'll probably see more bird activity. So make sure you write down those, uh, those soft beaches, uh, especially uh, when, you, uh, when you go to try to harvest those sand fleas in the fall because uh, come uh, later in the winter, they're not going to be available and you wish you harvested a bunch and, and froze some. But anyways, let's move on. Let's, let's go to two. Uh, let's go to water clarity. You know, let's assume you already have the effort. You know, number one uh, is water clarity. You have to get there early enough. Uh, you know, some beaches, they're popular. Depends on when you go. If you on the weekends, you really got to get there early. You're not going to get a decent spot. But uh, go there and, uh, you know, and I've got videos on water clarity. You can watch those. But it's all about you know, can you see light through the top of that wave when it's cresting? You know, and uh, when you get to the beach, what I do, I mean, it takes a lot of effort to get on the beach. What I like to do is get to the beach, take a walk to the beach before I even unload. And if I see green pea soup, water clarity, all the way to the horizon, and that's important to check that horizon, then I'm probably just going to pack it up, go home, and you know, watch football, basketball, or whatever. But uh, also keep in mind that some of your beaches have a lot of high shell content. So, you know, if you see 
dirty looking water, but you see about 100 yards out, it looks clearer, or darker. Uh, there's a good chance that you better unload and stick around because the tides are going to uh, help change that water for you. Let's, uh, let's go to number three. And, and back on number two for a second. You know, gin clear water to me isn't the best for pompano fishing because it seems to bring in more sharks. But, you know, you should still fish those days because you've got a higher probability of pompano. You may want to consider uh, fluorocarbon uh, for your rigs because uh, some monos aren't as clear and it might spook them. But uh, let's go on to three and let's go with bait. You know, you've got fresh and artificial. Well, obviously fresh bait is the best bait for pompano. You know, what do they eat the most? Well, they eat sand fleas the most. So if you've got fresh sand fleas, if you're lucky enough to be on a beach where you can harvest them, well, that's your number one bait. But the real tip here isn't about, uh, you know, whether you use sand fleas or clam, uh, which would be my uh, second choice, and shrimp would be my third. Uh, the important thing here is to also use artificial with the fresh. And you say, well, why, Jim? Well, here's why. You know, and you'll see this, uh, you know, down on step five, about 12 to 13 foot rods for distance. You know, when you start getting serious about fishing for pompano, you probably are going to have a 12 or a 13 foot rod. And there is a huge amount of load when you unhurl that thing uh, towards the ocean with a five ounce sinker or whatever you're using. And what's going to happen is, is you might even see it happen, especially with cooked fleas. Uh, you'll see the bait fly off. And uh, what good is putting your your rod uh, in the ocean or all three rods and waiting 20 minutes before you rebate if your, your hooks might be empty already because of the cast. So you need to use uh, fish gum or fish bites tipped with, you know, your fleas or cooked fleas or crab. And by having that deadly combo, you can cast as hard as you want, and even if the bait flies off, well, now you you got some real fresh bait smell that's touched your fish gum or fish bite, and I, I'm telling you, it, it makes the difference because you might have had two rods sitting in the water for 20 minutes before you go to rebait with nothing on them. So, important stuff. Use both, fresh and artificial. Uh, tides, you know. My rule of thumb was always, uh, most of the beaches I was at, was I had to be set up at least an hour to two before, um, before high tide and hang out at least two hours after high tide. But that doesn't apply to all beaches. You know, once in a while you're lucky enough to find a beach that's deep, you know, uh, farther north uh, from where I usually fish, there are beaches that are very deep. You know, they bring in all, all sorts of different fish. But the beauty of a deep beach is you can fish that beach the entire cycle of all the tides if you want to fish all day. And you, you can catch pomp all day. You know, your rule of thumb is, is scout some of these beaches when people are swimming maybe nearby. And, uh, and see how far they're going out. I mean, if you see people out there uh, 80 uh, 80 yards and they're only up to their waist, well, that's a that's a tough beach to fish because these pompano, you know, they want a little bit deeper water. They're not going to be swimming in a foot of water or three foot of water uh, without getting spooked. And uh, those deep beaches will allow you to fish the entire tide. And uh, God forbid, you know, you find a beach that's deep and has uh, real coarse, soft sand. Well, you might have a keeper. So, Keep that in mind. Let's take on the last one here, number five, casting distance. You know, when you cast your uh, your bait and your sinkers, uh, it's a lot to get out there. And you need uh, a huge uh, surf rod to really get the job done right. And they're available. The 13-foot rods are usually custom, but you can definitely go to Bass Pro or whatever and get 12-foot rods. And 
And if you watch some of the videos, I've got a couple with Chris Gallagher on there that shows his form and everything. But really, all that surf rod is is a huge whip. And once you learn how to use it and step into that cast, you're going to get more distance. You know, I'll never forget, um, there was this one beach I was on, and I was, I was catching pomps every day. And, you know, some of these people who live in the uh, condos, they have their... Uh, they have their uh, binoculars, and they tell their so-called fishing buddies that fish once every eight months. And uh, they'll say, yeah, this guy was catching all sorts of pompano uh, over there. You check it out. And I had these people, and they, they dropped right in on my spot. They watched where my tires went and where the cart stopped. And there they were, and I was there, and the sun was coming up. So, you know, I wasn't too happy of a surf fisherman, but what are you going to do? It's God's ocean, so... Uh, but anyways, they stood there and they fished and fished, and uh, I parked right next to them because I wasn't a happy uh, camper, but I gave them a reasonable distance. Um, I was going to do that for them, and uh, all of a sudden, the fish started to bite, and I started catching pomps, and they caught nothing, and they watched me. Oh, I don't know. I've got a commercial, so I, I don't have to stop at six, but they watched me haul in a bunch of pomps. And they weren't too happy. And the, the truth of the matter was, is, you know, they're short casters. They, they show up at the beach with a six foot rod and uh, they wonder why they're not catching pomps because they just cast into, you know, three foot of water. So that's it. You know, it's that easy. You know, once uh, you get all your gear and everything, you follow those five, uh, you're going to uh, you're going to catch more pomp. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our Pompano Brownie channel. And that's going to do it for this video.